I would say, I mean, she, throughout the film, she evolves a lot. So the part that I took were all the flashbacks were very different to the part that Charlotte had done. And we hadn't really talked about who Jo is or how she is because, I mean, in my mind, I've, you know, you're never the same when you're 15 or when you're 30 and then 40. So it's difficult to play the same character all the time. Um, and so that was really interesting to not have to think of matching what Charlotte thought Jo was. Um, because in my mind, she was still discovering a lot of things and she was learning what she believed in and what she thought was right and what she thought was wrong and having her own sort of code of etiquette. Because um, that's my experience that I had with her. And she became much more um, decisive and, and strong in who she was later on and with Jerome and, and Marcel. And then it switches to Charlotte, but that's a different Joe. I think she's very curious about her sexuality because she knows that it's something very young. She knows that it's something important to her, but she doesn't quite know how important it is and how to honor that importance. And she discovers it through B on the train and, and, and this, all these experiences, she becomes more assured. And so she develops this sort of, I don't know, kind of hardcore opinions about, you know, she's gonna go this far to get what she wants. And I think she's very opinionated, that's it. <laughs> um, and, and yeah. She's, I mean, I, I still have moments where I don't really know who she is because it's sort of a never, never ending discovery. I mean, I, I'd be on set and it would come, like you'd be in a scene and it would hit me and I'm like, oh, this is how she feels. This is who she is. And it, it was just, yeah, really interesting. Her relationship with Jerome starts off sort of, he he's just is a sort of utility at first. She He's a way of getting what she wants and it's the solution. And he later becomes her boss. Um, and they end up having a relationship together, which I th think she hopes will work, but deep down knows that it's not because she's so driven, um, but she tries. <laughs> um, and it's, it's, even though she, she loves him at, throughout the movie, it's not gonna deter her from, you know, having relationships with other people and going out. And so it's, 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 it's a difficult one because it's not so obvious because she goes against it and she's against love. So that relationship's quite interesting. And it develops as well through time at first. When they meet originally, they just sort of have sex and she doesn't really think much of him. But then it escalates and he becomes this obsession and this sort of man that she wants to possess and touch and feel and, and she gets it. <laughs> and then somehow it's not enough. She does start off, I think, you know, wanting to be part of a group and wanting to be part of something that they all believe in collectively. Um, and then she realizes that her drive is stronger than the other girls and becomes separated from that. And through that, she grows up much more individual and much more um, focused on her needs and her wants and, and completely dissociates herself from groups and people. And she ends up um, kind of almost proud of who she is and 
she's not going to be ashamed of, of wanting to have sex or, and, and it's a celebration for her. Um, so, it, yeah, it's sort of a discovery. Yeah. One of the things I realised with Lars is that all the actors that he's worked with, I think he knows that he, they will bring something in line with the characters or in line with what he wants to see. And so he just gives them a freedom to do that rather than kind of putting a cage down a character and letting the actor only pace around that cage. Um, and, and, and he's very patient <laughs> um, and he's very precise in his f sort of freedom style, I think. Because he, 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 he won't stop until he has that exact millisecond, but he won't tell you how to get to the millisecond. Um, it's sort of you to discover that. It's absolutely incredible what you can do now with special effects because, I mean, I, I clearly know I didn't have sex, um, but it, it bloody looks like I am, um, and it's even convinced me, so <laughs> it's, it's just incredible. We would sometimes do the scene before, um, and then they would film it with the porn doubles. And then, um, or they would shoot it with the porn doubles um, because they needed to see which position worked best for the camera, um, which is best to do with the porn doubles because they just don't care as much as I would do. And then I would have to go in and copy the position and, and it was incredibly technical. I mean, it's, it's people like, but you're going to get aroused. And I'm like, no, this, this, this is the least arousing situation I've ever been in because someone's telling you to move your tiny finger an inch higher because that's where the girl had it and you've got all these dots on your body. And I mean, it's, it, it's, it's so mechanical and technical that you just you almost forget that they're going to superimpose your things because you're like, is this really going to work? I mean, it's just black dots on my skin and in a position, but somehow it does work, so hats off to them. <laughs> he wants it to be ugly and he wants it to be real because that's what it really is, isn't it, in the end of the day? Um, it can be ugly and it can be quite raw um, and, and I think, I mean it works as well because it's, it's Lars and he has that peculiar s style and, 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 I don't know, yeah, it's a tricky one. But he, I think by making it so real it completely works, making it quite ugly and kind of in your face, I think it's, it's a it's a good thing because it doesn't become a porn movie. And I think that's what people might be quite shocked about is that it's not a porn movie. I mean, I don't know who watched it and who got aroused, I didn't. So, I mean, I don't watch porn, so I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's weird that you shoot a scene and then suddenly it becomes a porn set and the whole vibe of the thing changes. Um, and I've never been on the porn sets and um, suddenly you're there and the porn actors are doing what they do and you just realise maybe it's good to just leave the room. Um, and, yeah, because people are like, oh, so you, you know, you're... you're you're playing the nymphomaniac, you should be used to this. I'm like, no, hell no. I'm um, just gonna go outside and have a coffee, <laughs> let you do the whole porn thing. Um, so that was quite strange, because it just switches. There's not like a, you know, it's almost like a schizophrenic set. It's like doing a film set, doing a porno. Um, and then, I mean, talking about prosthetics, having prosthetics, you know, spending five hours getting a fake vagina glued on is, 
pretty interesting and, and I don't think that's ever going to happen again. 